Welcome back to the Green Means Go channel. It's your host, me. I need a haircut, but today we're talking about Noah Lyles. Noah Lyles has made himself known in the world in the last two weeks. Of course, part of it's due to what he's done on the track, but a lot of it and the majority of it has to do with what he's done off the track, in the media, in comments, in interviews, in everything. And today I've decided to cover all of that because I thought we were done with Noah Lyles, but today even more things break about the fella. And I said, this is too much to keep track of. Let me make a video talking about it all. That's what we did. That's what we're doing. Here we are. First, we're going to talk about the NBA beef that uh, stemmed from a comment he made in an interview almost a year ago. Then we're going to talk about his COVID-19 diagnosis kind of in the middle of the Olympics, which, um, you know, a lot of people have, you know, have, have made their comments about it, about what they believe to be true. I'll let you guys decide that as we get there. Tyreek Hill comes out today and addresses a uh, question he received in an interview um, at training camp. We'll talk about him, and then we'll talk about Anthony Edwards and Lyle's comments on Edwards as part of an Adidas shoe deal. So we'll start here. This is where it all started with Noah Lyles, with the drama, with the hate he's kind of receiving. And I was... Incorrect. I thought this was something he said at the Olympics. This is not something he said at the Olympics. This is something that was from a year ago. He was upset that the NBA players refer to themselves when they win the finals as world champions. And you'll see what he has to say about that. You know, the thing that hurts me the most is that I have to watch the NBA finals and they have world champion on their head. World champion of what? <laughs> The United States? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I, I love the U.S. at times. <laughs> but that ain't the world. That is not the world. We are the world. All right. So he is obviously bitter that when he wins his championships, okay, when he it proves that he is the best versus his competition, he has competed against the world. OK, and he is saying that the NBA is competing against other NBA players from the United States. Now, I will say that I disagree with this comment. I understand where he's coming from totally, but the NBA is comprised of other nations, right? People from other. I mean, th look at the MVPs in the last decade. Like, I, I want to say eight out of 10 of them, if you think about Giannis, if you think about Embiid, if you think about Jokic, ha are not USA players players okay they don't play for team usa ever i mean joel Embiid did but he could have played for other nations the point is these are not american-born athletes right and so the nba is a collection of the world's best players so when you are on a team of the world's best players and you win you become the best in the world okay it's kind of a deduction thing that's kind of a logic thing now i get there's some flaws there right and after he makes this comment nba players reacted like crazy okay Kevin Durant, somebody help out, uh, somebody help this brother. Swaggy P sounds dumb and mad. Is somebody going to tell him? Bam out of bio. Uh, Kendrick Perkins put, put, put his brain in a bird and the bird will start. I don't know what he says, um, but you get the idea, okay? People were upset, and rightfully so, because he sounds bitter. He sounds envious, you know, and he probably is, because who cares about track? I mean, outside of every four years in the Olympics, nobody cares about track, Okay, and, and if you do, I apologize. And I know there are some people who do care about track. But by and large, the sports world and the sports community do not care about track. Okay, so he was obviously upset um, and makes this comment. And, uh, you know, it kind of ticks off the NBA. Um, and this year in the Olympics, the USA wins gold. Um, and he says they saw how difficult it was. And of course, they came out on top. And of course, I knew they would, which is funny that he's like, uh, you know, I said all this stuff about them not being world champions, but I knew they'd win the Olympics. Uh, we have some of the greatest athletes, but you can't just uh, slap everybody together and say this is a great team, referring to the trouble that they had against Serbia and France on their way to winning gold. OK, USA basketball kind of trolls him back with a tweet after saying, are we world champions now? Um, jury's still out. And I don't know if we'll ever have an answer that completely satisfies everyone, but we'll get to what Noel Lyles thinks in just a second. Let's talk about his COVID-19 business, because I don't know. I, I am not, I don't think it's fair for me to uh, 
say what I believe is true in some aspects. Uh, I'll explain. Okay, August 4th, he wins the 100 meter, meter dash. The 100 meter dash. He wins a little 100 meter dash. He wins the 100 meter dash, wins gold, okay? He says, he claims, he woke up in the middle of the night on Tuesday, which would have been August 6th, so dead middle of this, all right, with chills, aches, sore throat. He was placed into quarantine in a near at a hotel near Olympic Village, and he said he only told medical staff his coach and his mother. He said he didn't want other competitors to find out and have an edge over him. What what edge would that have been? That's what I don't understand, okay? What edge would they have had? Look, if I know I'm competing against someone with COVID and I have to run 200 meters, what what am I going to do? What, like, genuinely, deprive him of oxygen? Like, in the warm-up, am I going to, like... Like what? Like what does that mean? Hide his inhaler? I just don't know what that means. Okay, there like there are sports where if I know in basketball my opponent has COVID, right? We're gonna ISO him, you know, and we're gonna hope I don't catch it, but we're gonna we're gonna wear that guy down. It's two hundred meters, dude. Right? He's gonna run it. Everybody's gonna run it in their own lane. It's gonna be over. There's no edge. All right. Now he goes on and runs this without telling anybody. He gets third, and then. He kind of breaks this news, right? He falls down. He needs a wheelchair. Uh, you know, he, he puts on the mask. He announces it like, I have COVID, um, which is just a little convenient. And I get both sides, right? I get not wanting to come forward and saying it because if Noel Lyles had come forward and said, I have COVID and then gets third, everybody was like, uh, yep, he kind of, he was kind of prepping us for the letdown. Oh, you know, he, he, he set the stage to kind of, uh, you know, make it so if he failed, it really wasn't as bad. Like people are going to be on him either way. But I do think in some ways it's worse to say it afterwards. Like maybe just if you're not going to tell anybody before, let's maybe not tell anybody at all. Okay. Obviously, people are scared and concerned with the health issues, the fact that he could have passed this along and was kind of selfish in running this with other people, uh, exposed him, you know, let other people be exposed to it. But I think this is very interesting that the last time he lost the 200 meters at the Tokyo Olympics, he said that he was struggling with his mental health during the pandemic, which is which could be very well is prob probably true. OK, but it's just fascinating that he loses the 200 twice and both times he's got kind of this excuse. And I'm not saying these excuses aren't valid. OK, he very well could be struggling with his mental health. He very well could have had COVID. Right. Um, I just think it's con it's convenient. OK. And then two days after this event, thank God I'm COVID free. He posts the negative COVID test um, and then is seen the next day partying with everybody. So it's just kind of an odd situation. You win. You, you conveniently win gold in the 100. Two days later, you get COVID. You don't tell anybody. Two days after, you get third in the event that you got third in last time and you had an excuse for it. You have an excuse for it. And then two days after that, you're like, all's well that ends well, baby. I got two medals and I'm proud of myself because I got the bronze when I was sick. Okay. Um, so a little bizarre. A little bizarre Sprinter there. Noah Lyles. He said that Super Bowl champs should not consider themselves world champions. What do you think of that? Noah Lyles can't say nothing after what just happened to him. You know what I'm saying? They didn't want to come out and pretend like he's sick. I feel like that's that's like horseradish. So for him to be, like do that and say that we're not world champions of of like our sport says a like come on, bro. Like just speak on what you know about. You know what I'm saying? And that's track. Would you like you to me? race him when he gets home? I will beat Noah Lyles. You think so? I will beat Noah Lyles. Like by a lot. No, I wouldn't beat him by a lot, but I would beat Noah Lyles. I'd like to see that happen. And guess what? When I beat him, I'm going to put on a COVID mask <laughs> oh God. and let him know I mean business because I do mean business. Obviously, Tyreek Hill is in a little bit stronger of a camp than I am in terms of COVID was an excuse. All right. He, he Tyreek Hill doesn't believe that Noah Lyles had COVID. He flat out says, you faked having COVID, okay, um, and you're jealous, you're bitter, stick to what you know. Now, what's ironic about this is in the same breath that he says, stick to what you know, which is track, um, Kay Adams asks him, could you beat him in a race? And Tyreek Hill says, oh yeah, for sure. So it's like, stick to what you know, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stick to football, right? He should have said, I could beat him in route running, right? I could beat him in catch, like I could beat him in a kick return. But it just seems, it seems kind of backwards that he's saying, you know what? Stick to what you know. Don't be arrogant. Don't be cocky in other areas. But I'm going to beat you in a race, a track race. Do I think Tyreek Hill could beat Noah Lyles? No. Okay. 
it's very unlikely. I think it would be close. Um, I think it would it would get people to watch. I need a haircut, man. But I don't think um, I don't think Tyreek Hill would actually beat him because if he would, what I mean, wouldn't Tyreek Hill? Whatever. Okay. Last thing is Anthony Edwards, and this was from um, February, and um, it's just now coming to light again because Noah Lyles tweets this morning about it. We'll talk about that in a second. So when Lyles was negotiating an Adidas contract extension last year, the company, he says, threw him what they thought was a bone. Adidas invited him to a shoe release event for Anthony Edwards, the rising Timberwolves star who has plenty of talent, but unlike Lyles, isn't a six-time world champ. You want to do what, says Lyles? You want to invite you want to invite me to an event for a man who has not even been to an NBA finals in a sport that you don't even care about. And you're giving him a shoe? No disrespect. The man is an amazing athlete. He's having a heck of a year. I love that they saw the insight to give him a shoe because they saw that he was going to be big. All I'm asking is, how could you not see that for me? Okay, so real quick. Sadly, I just think this is an economic issue. Um... Anthony Edwards will sell shoes for Adidas. Noah Lyles may sell shoes for Adidas once every four years, okay? Nobody is concerned about Noah Lyles when it's not an Olympic year, when it's not an Olympic two weeks, all right? People will be concerned about Anthony Edwards for the next four years, and he will generate sales. So this is not an issue of them not giving Noah Lyles the respect he deserves. This is just a financial issue. Now, Noah Lyles tweets, there's a rumor going around that I did not go to his shoe release because he didn't deserve it. That is not the case. He definitely deserves his shoes. He is an amazing player. The problem was finding time based on prior engagements. Now, I'm going to guess that Time Magazine is a very reliable source and did not just fudge this up. Okay, Um, so he's backtracking here. Funniest thing, though, congratulations on becoming an Olympic champion, not a world champion, not a world champion an Olympic champion. Oh, I just think Noah Lyles may just have a little bit of pain built into him. Okay. He's just got, he's got a grudge against something. Um, and it's probably the fact that he plays a sport at a tremendously high level, the highest level and gets no recognition compared to people in other sports. It's what it comes down to is my guess. If I'm going to psychoanalyze Noah Lyles for, for 30 seconds, that would be my uh, conjecture. Um, so what's my advice to him? Go play football, Noah. Um, maybe see if uh, you know you can do some kick returns and you will probably get some attention. I don't know, guys. I'm not trying to be mean to Noah Lyles. I just think he's not able to see the whole scope of what he is in the sports world, which is not a disrespect to him. It's just how our world values different things. So um, I doubt we see him again. I don't know. I don't know how track works and Olympics work and like the longevity of careers. I don't know how old he'll be. I think maybe th- mid, th- you know, low 30s in 2028. We'll see if we see him again. I doubt it. That's the Noah Lyle story today. Uh, winning gold at capping and yapping. And I believe I just won silver. <laughs>